Good morning. How are you doing? I uh, received some lovely emails over the last week or two, so thank you. Uh, really appreciate hearing from you. Uh, and yeah, people are saying that my personality is coming through in the videos and that it sounds like I care. So thank you. Uh, I do care and I'm super thrilled that that comes through. This week, we're going to be covering joint costs. The first topic is looking at the challenges of these joint costs. And we're really going to be focusing on some definitions and what they mean so that we build the foundation of what the rest of the chapter with the four videos in total will be covering. So as an overview, joint costs are input costs that lead to the output of several items. So several meaning two or more. An example is a machine that separates egg yolks from egg whites for sale. The egg whites are sold as a health food, whereas yolks are sold directly to restaurants for use in pastry. The challenge presented is determining how much the cost is allocated to each output. These outputs or products are referred to as joint products. The, any output of production process that has low value is called a byproduct. And then any output that has minimal to no value is referred to as scrap. Note that simply because two output products are produced does not mean they are joint products, as byproduct and scrap are not considered to be joint products. Please watch out for outputs that actually cost the company additional funds to dispose of, such as nuclear waste, as this is not considered a joint product, as it has no sales value. Further down our cost overview discussion, when working with joint costs, there are some key terms to be used when we discuss them. The quote split off point is regularly referred to. This is the point in production where there, is, where there are at least two main products and that they become separately identifiable. Okay, separately identifiable. So at one point, like it's just one big egg together. And then at the split off point, when the yolk splits from the egg white, that's called the split off point. And then we get egg yolks and we get egg whites. So two separately identifiable products. The separable costs are cost of processing each main product after they've reached the split off point. So up until the split off point, they're joint costs. And after the split off point, they are separable costs. There are a number of reasons to allocate joint costs, and please note that this list is not exhaustive. Uh, we need to look at these when cal accurately calculating cost of goods sold for financial statements to help assess the internal profitability of managers or divisions, to aid in determining an amount allocated for insurance settlements or in a lawsuit over cost input. We can also look at these to track costs for reimbursements from government vendors or items like that. All right, time for a question. A sawmill runs 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with a goal to produce boards that can be used for decking in home construction. A large bandsaw slices through logs and cuts them into boards. Small end pieces or pieces of bark that remain are then chipped and sold as consumer fuel for barbecues. As the blade runs, a significant amount of sawdust is produced and collected, which is later sold to local mushroom producers <laughs> for use in substrate to grow mushrooms. The sawdust in this scenario is most likely considered a, would it be byproduct, scrap, main product, or joint product? If you said byproduct, you would be correct. A byproduct has low sales value, and given that it is being sold to mushroom farmers, it is clearly not a near zero or zero value good like scrap. Since it doesn't cost anything to dispose of, it isn't waste either. Therefore, it is best described as a byproduct. Alrighty, great work. I will see you in the next video.